scriptures today will be from 1 Peter chapter 1 chap verses 17 through 23. <clears throat> Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. For you know it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him. And so your faith and hope are in God. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring Word of God. What manner of communications are these that you have one to another? As he walk and us sat. Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem and hast not known of the things which are come to pass there in these days? What things? Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women, also of our company, made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. When they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. 
And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it even so as the women had said. But him they saw not. O oh, fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. Thanks for thy bounties. Amen. Amen. Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures? We must return to Jerusalem this very hour. for us to move out from the place there's so many chaos over there. But thank you that you are walking with us to the place that we want to be there and make us return back to you in Jerusalem. Father God, we ask for your blessing upon your people who are here and may your spirit feed them feed their soul, their hearts, their minds with your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. On the road to Emmaus, on Easter Sunday we celebrate that Jesus lives. And last Sunday we were talking about doubting Thomas. And our belief to Jesus is time to be dying out from us. And today, that Jesus come to walk with us in our doubt. And reposition our life and also reposition the way we walk. And make sure that we have the faith and still celebrate that he lives because of all of us. From Easter Sunday to the ascension that Jesus returned back, there were more than ten appeared to different kind of a people, including 500 people. And today, it's the third time Jesus sowed when he was resurrecting from death. First, he was appeared to the group of women. And the second one, he appeared to Mary Magdalene. And today, he appeared to do men walking on the road to Emmaus. Let's see why Luke wrote all of this in 
And he wrote the story in a significant way in every step, every position that he made. So we can see how God is working in our lives from Emmaus or the road to Emmaus. There were two men, that's what Luke said. They were in Jerusalem, and Jerusalem is the place they being experienced a horrible things that happened to Jesus on Friday and Saturday and buried and resurrect. Still live in their mind what really happened over there. I think resurrection is not very important at the time to their mind. But what they saw was happening on Friday and also Saturday. And during that time, they fill in with some fear inside themselves. And now they are making their mind, I am going to a new place. I no longer live in Jerusalem. I'm heading to Emmaus. I was known when I was in Jerusalem. I have everything that I have. But I don't want to be a person hanging on the cross. I better go to a place that's more safer for me to go over there. Even though I didn't know what is a maze. It is unknown for me. But what I have experienced in that place, I don't want to involve in the trouble they have. We ran with our life when we felt inside ourselves we are not secure in that place. It may be another story for that. But this story is really different how they felt inside themselves. We are in Jerusalem and now I'm finding an unknown place on the road that I've never experienced in my life. When we have so many things inside ourselves, we just run away. It's not new to all of us. When we turn on the TV and say, I'm no longer living in Chicago or New York or San Francisco, that's unsafe for me to be over there anymore. Just think for a moment. Who could have deal with the problem? When we walk away from the problem, they build the problem higher and higher. I will send on a mission to keep the world peace. Or we just run away from that. That was in the mind of those two persons. And here stayed on the readings. Now the same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles. I love the way it looks, they say, seven miles. And walking over there seven miles with a conversation, it's about three hours walking. My exercise is only 10 minutes walking, that's good enough for me. <laughs> Three hours might be ended up in the hospital. <coughs> but these those two men were thinking, Jerusalem, it was so nice to us. We lived there long. But because of all of this, I don't want to involve, I had to find a new place for me to live over there. It's more safer for me and my family. As they walk and discuss these things with each other. Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. When we have so many problems in our lives, we are thinking we are by ourselves, and we start walking to get away from that. We didn't know that someone is walking next to you. That's all of a sudden you see, Jesus is here, he's walking with me. But let's see what Jesus is doing for your life. Because sometimes we know Jesus but we, we never affiliate with Jesus. 
Sometimes we see Jesus, but we didn't know to ask him, how to ask him, be with me at this time. Just listen carefully. What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their face downcast. Now we know the problem. They are walking downcast with their problem. You see how heavy it is? They never look forward. They have no hope at all. I have no right where to go. I am downcast. I am looking down for my life and every step I make is very important for me to walk. And one of them named Cleopas. At the beginning, that Lord never mentioned any name. Because Luke wrote his book to the Gentiles. To you and me, unknown. You are not part of the covenant. You are not elected people. You are nothing. And slowly, there's another name and over here, Cleopas. But the other person is still unknown meant to you and me. There is a place over there for you and me. It's okay for your pastor to have your name. May be that seed is the Vida. Maybe the unknown is Christiana. Maybe James. Maybe Mary. Maybe you, maybe me. It's available to all of us. And see, when they downcast, one of them named Calabas asks him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the thing that have happened? There's in these days, where are you coming from? You didn't know what was happening in Jerusalem. Sounds strange for me. People left Jerusalem to find their own way, including both of us. And all of us in the unknown name. I love, I love that Jesus is saying, what things? What things? You know, if I was there, man, what things? That's why I came. That's why I walked out from Jerusalem because that's what's happened. And you come and ask me, what things? And those two are saying, about Jesus of Nazareth. They replied, he was a prophet, powerful in words and deed before God and all the people. The chief priest, the story changes. That Jesus is the most powerful man we ever had. But the chief priest and the rulers crucify him. Let's make them downcast because of crucify. Crucify. If you see a horror movie or anything like that, it's stuck in your mind. In addition, some of the women amaze us. I love, I love it. I love it when looks and say some women amaze us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but did not find anybody. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angel who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it was as the woman had said 
but they did not see Jesus. The women, they found Jesus. They still not believe. Because what the women say is not trustworthy of their time. Whatever story, if you are women or woman, we are not going to believe you. And I, and I really love when Jesus says, says, says listen, he, he said to them, how foolish are you? How foolish are you? And how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. The women already told them, including Peter and the rest of the disciples, doubting Thomas last Sunday, they are locked in in a room. They are still afraid of what's going on. Because they did not believe the women, what the women told them. And now Luke wants us to come and make sure what the women told, it was right. But he, he did it in a different ways. He would like to invite two men as a witness for what is going on. Legally, everybody will believe and trust that story because of the two men. But Luke wants them to know the women already found the story, but they did not believe. And he said, how foolish are you? And how slow to believe that the prophet have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And in the beginning of Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continue if we are going further but they urge him strongly stay with us for it is nearly evening my sisters and my brothers we are not finding God God finding us Whatever prayers that we lift up in our lives, in our own situation, there's God is working according to your situation. And He is with us. We won't have enough strength to go to God because we are sinners. Sinners do something to sin. But God realized how much for all of us to bear. He comes to us. He comes to those two men and strengthens them because the story of the women who found Jesus already risen need to be alive. Story need to go on. And they invite Jesus, stay with us. Have you ever thinking about your life? You are walking with Jesus and talk to him in three hours, seven miles in your lives. And when he did something for you and he said, bye bye Jesus. Or he says, say, Jesus, please stay with me.
He stayed. Because they invite Jesus to come to them. Sometimes we're hanging around with Jesus, but we never invite him to come to our lives. When they invite Jesus to their lives, they are strangely warm. And I was thinking about John Wesley. There's a warm inside their hearts. And that warms open their mind, their heart, and their eyes. And then Jesus picked up the bread, blessed the bread, and broke the bread and gave it to them. We are one because of that bread. We are one because of the body of Jesus who are willing to walk with us and take the burden out from our lives and give hope for those they did not have hope. Just you and me with Jesus and inviting. When we invite Jesus to our lives, He blesses us. He is the only one who knows the blessing. And He's the blesser for us. And he wants us to be a blesser for the others. By broken the bread and give it to you and say, this is my body. This is my blood of the new covenant for out for you and, the, and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it and remember me. Those two, they never been in the upper room. They didn't know. But they recognize when Jesus fed the 5,000 people, those two were there. They realize this is the Messiah. This is Jesus. And we are so blessed. Here it is. They hate to go to Jerusalem, but because God already arranged Jesus, and gave him a blessing to give to the others. Jesus blessed them and sent them back to Jerusalem. Think about yourself. If you left a place, there's too many things happen over there. You don't want to be part of that. And you walk away from that to find a new place. And then Jesus says, hey, hey, hey. Hey, go back, go back, go back. Mm. You are not allowed to be there. This is, that is where you're supposed to go. You have to go back to Jerusalem. Why? He went over there. The first man he met, they met is Peter. They told Peter what, what was happening. So the witness now is legally approved that Jesus is risen. Because the women told them they did not believe, and now the men, two men came down to make him what the women told you. It was true, but you did not believe. But he had to go back to Jerusalem and remember that Jesus said, stay in Jerusalem in the upper room the Holy Spirit will come and it must be there. If those two stay in Emmaus and the Holy Spirit fell in Jerusalem, the story is done. There's nobody. Nobody will listen to Peter when he stand up and preaching on the Pentecost day. But Peter strengthened his faith because those two Remind him, you remember the women, the Marys told you it was right. All he can do is just believe it. They have no hope, now they have hope. The place they don't like, they return back over there. Because everywhere we are going, that Jesus already prepared a place no doubt about it. If we have faith in him, 
in trusting Him, invite Him to your lives, and ask Him to stay with you. And listen carefully. Some places you hate to go over there, He will send it back over there. When you go over there, God is already prepared. And now we have the blessing of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will live in us forever. And we are the brothers and sisters of Christ, the sons and the daughters of the living God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let us return back to Jerusalem in good faith. And let us pray. Loving God, we are so grateful for this morning and we thank you for every station you took us to witness for what is going on in your lives and also in our lives. Father God, give us hope and for the place that you want us to be there, please send us. We are strong enough to go because of that vow. We ask all of this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.